Hello everybody, hello fellow cartographers and welcome to this week's live map making. I'm Ralph Schemann of Profanity Software and I'm going to show you a bit of battle map making tonight with our campaign cartographer and dungeon designer 3. And I hope you enjoy it and perhaps learn a little bit from it. If you have any questions, feel free to post them under the video. In the video comments, Sue will take a look and forward me anything that uh, can be answered in this format and I'll see that I get around to answering a few of your questions later on in the video. But first, let's start with, uh, as usual, a showing off for those who see this as their first video, a bit about the uh, interface of Campaign Cartographer and the, the tool I am going to be working with. Here where we, you see our nice little uh, waiting text, that's the main drawing area where I, where I will be creating the map, where you will see the results. And to the left of that is the uh, catalog window where we can load up different symbol catalogs and drawing tools and click on these to place them in the map. Further to the left, on the left uh, edge of the interface is the drawing toolbar the left drawing toolbar with uh, general tools for drawing tools and um, editing functions that let you change the properties of entities in the map. And above the uh, drawing area is the, the first toolbar above is the symbol catalog, uh, the to catalog toolbar, which uh, lets you switch between the different symbol catalogs available for the style. You'll see that in action later. Still above that is the file toolbar where you can save and load maps and switch between different add-on menus. We'll be using the Dungeon Designer menu in this video. And above that is the properties bar where you see the current settings for things like layers and colors and bitmap fills. You can also change the, your current settings from there. And finally, uh, to the very right, is the cat toolbar, or the two cat toolbars, with functions like map ordering and zoom functions that uh, let you zip, you zoom around the map, and general cat drawing tools, so basic cat drawing tools, like drawing lines and paths and polygons and things like circles and squares. So, let's see, uh, I was uh, saying I was going to use Dungeon Designer uh, tonight, so I've already loaded the uh, Dungeon Designer menu and I'm going to click the new icon. I'm not going to save this map here and then I'm going to choose my map type. The, uh, I'm going to uh, choose the map type Dungeons. This may sound a little bit misleading since I uh, want to do an uh, outdoor floor plan, an outdoor uh, battle map. But uh, this is included in the same style, because, uh, map type, because it uses the same kind of state, uh, scale and environment. So I click Next and then I get to choose my different dungeon styles. Dungeon DD3 Dungeon is the basic a drawing style of Dungeon Designer, we've got some older stuff and various styles from the symbol set add-ons. And actually for this tonight's uh, session I've decided to use the symbol set for uh, Dungeon Style by Mike Schley because that's uh, very nice and clear to see and uh, it works just like uh, the uh, basic Dungeon Designer style just with a different set of artwork. So I'm gonna click Next. And here I'm going to set the uh, dimensions, the size of my map in feet, because I've chosen an imperial template, not a metric one. So for this I'm going to think a bit about uh, how large my uh, map's going to be. And uh, I know you know, I want to print or export the map uh, at a typical miniature scale later, so one inch on paper should be five feet. That in mind I'm going to choose 110 feet by 80 feet, because that will give me about the size of an A2, let, uh, A2 size paper, so something I can print on four pages on my normal home printers and actually tape that together if I want to use it physically on a table. Okay, and uh, then I'm 
going to click next to so see what my background is. And I see my map bitmap fill style is already set to grass and dirt background, which is perfect for an outdoor battle map. I could, for a dungeon map, I might perhaps want to uh, change that to a rock or stone fill style. But here I'm happy with the grass and dirt one. And I'm just going to leave it at that and click finish and save my map under a new name. Let's call it outdoor battle map. And here's my basic background with the grass and fill, grass and earth fill style. So what's my idea? What I want to, what do I want to draw? I was thinking about doing a bridge over a little river with some uh, with a bridge house at one end and, and some woods on the other, and. Um, that sounds nice for a little combat or skirmish encounter in a game and shouldn't be too hard to create. So what's my main feature? Probably the river for the map. And I want to start with uh, some water to put on the map. I could just click uh, the, the button and start drawing, but here I'm going to right click on the icon and see what kind of different tools I have available. I have different waters in different colors, some dirty water or sludge for sewers or something. And I'm just going to start here with a mid-tone blue water to create the outlines of my river. And I'm going to start here somewhere in the middle, deciding my river is going to run north-south. And here I'm going to do a nice little wide piece of river. Draw the other side, attach the tool to the map border, go down a little here and right click to finish my. <laughs> I've got a cat here on the table, so I was sorry for the little interruption, got to get rid of that for the moment. There we go. And uh, there's my river on the map. And um, okay, that's the just the basic outline of the river, and we'll probably need a, uh, to enhance that a little bit to make it look nicer. At first step, I'm going to turn on the sheet effects so I can see what my actual final look of the river is going to be. And the river is small enough that I can work easily with sheet effects turned on. See, we've just got the the river edges here shadowed a bit darker to stand it out from the uh, earth background. So what do I need? I might need a little bit, um, probably it's not a deep river or anything, or perhaps it's summer and it's not uh, in high water. So I'm going to draw a few um, dirt or um, earth areas into the river as sandbanks or something like that. I'm just going to choose the default terrain. And here I've got different dirt and earth type tools. And let's choose the dirt brown tool here and draw a few pieces of earth into the river that are not covered by water. Here we go. And if I'm going to check here, I'm drawing currently drawing on the sheet outside and seeing what are up here. That's where the drawing tool is putting these pieces on. And if I do a refresh of the map, there's one thing that uh, they are suddenly gone. What's happened? Uh, let's take a look at the sheet effects, uh, the sheet list. You can see here's my outside uh, sheet I'm drawing on. And my water sheet is actually further down in the list, meaning it's been, been drawn later and the water covers the earth pieces I've done. So I'm going to chase and change that by moving the water just above the outside sheet. And if I click OK now, you can see here's my, my earth is back on the water. I can see it now because it's drawn later in the drawing order of the map. Um, that's how I want it here in the map. I'm also going to do and move the 
water contour sheets up so that they are just below the water sheet again. Because that's the ne next thing I'm going to do, I want to draw some little bit deeper areas of water. I'm going to show deeper water by using a darker water texture. So I'm going to load my water colors again and I'm going to choose the this dark blue color and draw some darker stretches into the map. Here we go. And another one here. Okay, that's my, and I noticed I've done something a little bit what I didn't want to do. I can't say this wrong, but I've drawn that on the water sheet again. And that means because the lighter and the darker water is on the same sheet, the edges of the darker water don't get any sheet effects applied. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click the sheets and effects tool, say move to sheet, select my three different water polygons, right click and do it, and put these on the water contour one sheet. And now they get their own sheet effect, the edge fade effect, you see the darker sections now probably properly fade into the lighter blue around them. I can do that if I hadn't forgotten that I would have done that before drawing that and so I'm gonna show you with the, the next layer of water I want to do some brighter uh, sections for some not necessarily shallower but perhaps more agitated water with some white water spray and for that I'm gonna choose the lightest watercolor and just draw this a little bit around the sandbanks I've got here. Doesn't have to be absolutely exact, just a little bit of splashes into the water and refresh and there you can see there's my brighter water. So that looks quite nice to start for my river. So I'm going to take a quick look at the questions. I'm seeing soon as already posted me a question, see what's is being asked here. How did they make the river line up with the lines at top and bottom with a smooth poly? Okay, that's a good question. This has actually been done automatically uh, by me um, for the tool. If I click on the water tool here and uh, you, if I ch click on the advance button and take a look at the water tool, it says restrict to map border. And if this option is clicked, it will do the exact fitting to the map water so as you've seen when I was drawing that. So you don't really have to do anything about it. But sometimes you might want to uh, extend a uh, polygon across the map border, then you can simply uncheck this option and have it draw across the border. Okay, so what's next? We do really need our actual bridge across the river. This is our the main focus of the map, so do let's do that next. And we've got some bridge symbols here loaded right up. You can see them already here in the symbol catalog. And I'm gonna start with the I'm gonna do a stone bridge. So I'm gonna start with the end piece of the bridge here. And you see it's uh, consists of different sections and to make these fit together nicely, I'm going to activate the snap. That means there's a grid defined for the map and each point I click so it goes exactly on the grid. That makes fitting things together very easily because you don't have to match them by eye. So this is the beginning of the bridge. Then I've got the middle piece and I'm just going to draw my bridge across till I'm on the other side, choose the end piece for the bridge. There's my bridge. If I zoom in, see it here. I'm going to do a nice little trick for the bridge later on to make a broken bridge from it, but for now this is fine. 
So what do we do next? Obviously, there's a road running uh, across the bridge, so we need to something to set that up to uh, the add that to the grass and dirt background. So that's going to be another terrain drawing tool. I right click the terrain drawing tool and take a look. But do I want to draw the red uh, dirt? Dirt road sounds just fine. So I'm going to take this tool and just draw. I'm going to turn off the snap again. So I'm free with my, the points. I uh, place my points. Again, it does the same thing here. The tool it uh, attaches itself to the map order because it's restricted to be drawn within it. On the other side, I'm just drawing across the uh, bridge, and if I refresh, you can see that uh, the tool draws the road behind the bridge piece. But now I'm looking at this and seeing uh, the the textures. So similar to the grass and dirt background, I can't really see the uh, differentiate the, the road from the other background. So I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna do change properties, choose my road polygon, do it, and I'm gonna chase a different choose a different fill style. Zoom down, and we've got some dirts here, and let's take a darker dirt so we can see it more clearly. More clearly. So that's better. See, I can see the road more clearly now. And but to draw again, I can start right away by choosing the appropriate drawing tool with that fill. There we go. There's my road. So what else do we, do we need? We do need, you see the grass and earth, uh, grass and dirt texture is nice and all, but it's too uniform to be used all across the map. The map. I do need some change in that, some differentiation. So I'm thinking my, my road house, uh, my bridge house is going to go on the lower right. So I can leave that for the moment. My woods is going to be here. So I do need some darker, or some greenish uh, textures for the woods here on the other, other side of the river. Let's see what the terrain tools have to offer. And if I take a look here, we have got some nice grass tools. This looks, no, but it's perhaps too grassy for whole forest background. But I've got some broken up bitmap textures here with the white holes in it. And that's might be just nice to draw here for the forest background. Again, let's see it attaches to the map border. That's something at least. It's not perfect, but it's a good start. See what we can do. We can just draw across this again with yet a different tool. So let's. This was that was the dry grass with some green grass here. Let's do that, and let's draw some darker sections in here. That's looking pretty good. And I'm thinking on the other side across from the bridge house is going to be a pasture or a meadow. So we're just going to do a big green grassy area up there to start. If you see, I've got some different grass textures in here. Yes, this is marked with the FC and that's from the Forlorn Cottage Pack. That's the free add-on to simple set 5 that you can automatically download well, was actually now included in the basic uh, simple set 5 install already nowadays but we just released that a little bit later so i'm just going to draw use that to draw a grass patch up here looking good and um 
Zorn was talking about the bridge house already. Let's put that down and uh, place that. For that we are going to bit to the standard dungeon features of a dungeon designer and I'm going to choose the add room tool here. And here you can choose different uh, textures for the floors and walls of your building. I've got a reddish brown floor here. Let's perhaps do a um, maple one instead from the Fallen Cottage. This is with horizontal uh, wood beams. Let's no, the very vertical actually. Let's do horizontal ones. That's good. And perhaps let's do a stone wall. So it's a solidly built cottage with a natural stone or rock. Let's choose the natural rock here. Okay, you can set the size of your, uh, the width of your walls here. Half a foot sounds just fine. So I'm just going to do OK. I'm going to turn on my snap grid again and gonna draw my house down here on the right. There we go. And there you can see is my house shape. I find the wall, the effects on the walls is a bit too strong perhaps. So I'm, so I'm gonna go in and adjust that for my map. See the, there's a bevel on the walls, which I'm gonna make a bit smaller. There's a whole foot, which is on a half foot wall, not uh, a bit too much. So make it a quarter foot width of the bevel instead. And then we've got the outside glow with a strength of 25%. Let's make that half that with 12, 5%. Okay. And that looks better like that. So, so there's my house shape. While we're at it, let's just quickly uh, put a door into the building. So for that I click the wall features catalog button here and my catalog with all the doors and windows and stuff pops up. So it's gonna have a single wooden door. See it snaps automatically to the wall here. I could also put it on the side, but it's going to go out in the front of the building. And there's my door on the, on the hut, on the house. Okay, that's nice, um, but we might want to set up the house a little bit uh, from the dirt background. So I want to draw a bit of a... Um, darker grass along the edges of the buildings. For that I'm just going to turn off my snap again, choose a grass drawing tool and outline the area here, just leaving out the bit in front of the door. And refresh shows you that it's nicely behind uh, the house. Also I could uh, create a path to and from the house to the street. For that I'm going to choose my dirt, brown dirt background again. So I was using the four for the road. Maybe let's do the same thing here. And there's my dirt path. Okay, there's my house. Let's uh, take a little break and uh, see what questions we got in the meantime. Okay, um, Quentin has the, uh, the question about the lines in the bridge. That's because uh, it's individual. See this this line here. That's uh, from the bitmap because it scales this uh, the different resolution scale bitmaps always change a little bit differently and it's just an artifact of the display here. If you print or output the line, the, the map to a bitmap file or print it on your home printer, these lines will not be visible. So we're going to just leave them here for the moment and not 
care about them on our screen. Um, and Philip asks about the grid snap. Um, I was going to show the grid a bit later, but I can always uh, take a peek at here. Here, if you right click on the grid button, you can choose between different grids. And the most dungeon maps or templates are set up with a typical five foot two snap grid. That means you have a point snap point every five feet and a additional point that's not shown uh, halfway between those. And you, but you can change that. You can you could uh, change the ten foot two snap grid, or you can do five snaps on a five foot grid. Define your own grid. I'm going to work with a five foot two snap grid here, and going to show you adding an actual grid on the map for printing later. And the third question is from Chris: What's the difference between floor background and floor foreground? That was on the room tool, if I remember that correctly. Yeah. Um, this is a bit of an artifact from older versions where you um, would have a plain color background and a pattern on top, like a paving pattern or an earth pattern, as you can see here, which would create the texture of the overall floor. Since uh, the three version of the program works with bitmap fills, which have this pattern already integrated into the fill, we don't usually use the floor ground, uh, foreground option anymore. But it's still usable if you want to put a vector pattern on top of uh, something else or use one of the older vector drawing styles, it still comes in useful. All right, back to our map. So it's time to populate the map a little bit with um, symbols. Let's go for the big ones first. We need some trees on the map for a wooded area on the left of the forest. The catalogs have the um, skirmish symbols here, which is a blanket uh, category for creatures that they could put on the map, but also large uh, things like bushes and trees. So we've got some tree symbols here. Yeah, I'm going to click one of uh, the trees. I'm going to start with trees first. Make sure that my active drawing sheet is symbols trees because I want these to be higher, cast longer shadows, and uh, that's why they're going to go on this sheet. And you can see they are pretty big Mike's uh, trees as they should be. But if, if I can sp change through different um, symbols in the catalog with a tabulator key, and there's some smaller options available as well. So let's put on uh, the smaller ones first. Here we go, a smaller tree, here's gonna smaller tree, another one, one here, and one here, and then go for some bigger one, I'll make them a little bit bigger. Here we go, put them on top, big tree, it's a bit smaller one, it's a big tree. Here we go, another one here in the corner. There's my big trees. Now you're going to see that some of the big tr uh, tree symbols extend beyond the map border or the screen that hides the symbols along the map border. That's another issue with just display on the map here. When, we're gonna, when we are exporting the map, we're going to export just the map border section and this will not be visible anymore. Same with printing. So um, then we've got some bushes. Add some bushes to the map, and um, this is going to go on the sim. These are going to go on the symbol sheet, which is nice because that's below the symbol tree sheet, so we don't have to worry about putting all the bushes on top of the trees. There we go. Add some ones along the river here. Some nice underbrush. Perhaps some goblins are hiding in there, or something similar. And I'm thinking there might be a hedge around our pasture, pasture here on the top right and we can do the, create that very easily with just adding some bushes next to each other. I'm leaving a gap here so the farmer has access to his field. A bush here, here and that's looking already pretty good. There we go. 
So then we're gonna need some weeds and stuff along the the river. This is just very low uh, plants close to the ground there. Got a little selection of different weeds here, so I that select randomly each click. And this is you see it's pretty small. Let's zoom in a bit for using that. And Symbol slow that will still cast a shadow. I think I'm just we want to go to symbols flat so they don't cast any shadow at all. That's they're so low we don't see their shadow on the map here. And I'm just gonna sprinkle these along the river edge. Oop, that was a slight misclick to give this a bit of a overgrown appearance. You can see I can even put it on top of the bridge here, and because I'm on the symbol sh sheet. Oh, actually, they're automatically going on the symbol slow sheet. Uh, so the symbols are set up that way. That's okay. So we're going to live with this small shadow. That's going to be fine. Here we go. And do some more weeds along the river edge. Just follow me along here. Also going to put a few along the edge of the house. The farmer's obviously not very orderly about Getting rid of the weeds along his wall. Here we go. Getting a few more. Again, the uh, walls and the floor of the building are above the low symbol sheet in the drawing order, so they nicely hide the symbols that we placed there. Need a few more weeds along the river here on the other side. There we go. And here. And that's nicely done. Okay, what else have you got? I'm gonna take a look uh, further down the catalog here. We're coming to the forlorn cottage part of the symbols. See on there starting with FC, that's for forlorn cottage. And um, there's some nice stuff in there which we could uh, use so a burrow or, or some kind of animal. Having built a burrow on the pasture sounds just perfect. So I'm just gonna grab that and this goes nicely on symbols flat. Obviously, won't cast a shadow because it goes into the ground. I'm holding down the shift key to rotate the symbol, or the control key to resize it. And see, it nicely matches the grass background here. So I'm just gonna do that up here and put it a little bit below the bushes. And now we've got the nice burrow going into the ground. Uh, some more bushes and some stuff. Oh, no, it might be a few ones that would have been great for the hedge as well, but I'm happy with mine. And we have some garden stuff here raised, vegetable beds and uh, other pieces for gardens, vegetable rows, and this will be perfect, just perfect to place behind our house for the, the farmer's vegetable garden. Using the arrow keys to align that. Shadows, there we go. Another one. Place some vegetable rows. And perhaps something growing right up to the house here. There we go. And I also want a little bit more different background here, so we have just earth background. It's gonna do uh, another darker dirt. This sounds looks good for the garden. It's just fine, and probably a bit of a. Oh, let's place some more bushes. Where are my bushes? 
here they are on the right edge of the map. There we go. So, yes, my uh, forest does that need a little ball. Yeah, we could place some few more bushes in here. Set it back to normal because of my resizing of the burrow earlier. The size wasn't at one anymore. Then let's another always good catalog for outdoor material is the rocks and terrains. Oh, what's happening? Ah, oh, my zoom is still active. That's why I'm not loading the catalog here. The cave catalog because it's got some rocks stuff so it sounds good to put some rocks perhaps in the river zoom in here put a few rocks on the island here some individual ones there we go yes. and some rocks on the this larger one looks good and then some brown rocks to scatter along the roads see they go automatically on the symbols flat sheet and don't cast any shadows at all finished another nice outdoor thing is i think in the vegetation catalog no, it's not in there. It's probably just in the symbol. Tools, the terrain tools to be exact, not in the cave tools. The, um, oh, come on. Wagon tracks. I know I have some wagon tracks in here somewhere, but not in this catalog. I know I had some crack wagon tracks in here somewhere. No. Good question. Where did I put them? Let's turn off the display symbols. Ah, oh, there they were. Path. They were class as path tools. There they are. White. Right. Car tracks sounds good. I just uh, just to show what I did. I uh, to find something quicker by text. I unchecked the display sample option in the catalogs to uh, win, uh, selection dialog. I can turn that back in uh, to and then there. Yeah, I see. I can see the car track tool now. And now I want to draw some car tracks along my road. For that, I'm just gonna. Draw one line of car tracks it's up to the the bridge. Do a little bit of diversions. It's not just one car that went that way, but a couple of them, or well, several of them actually, probably. So I'm going to do a bit of a meandering track here. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy them. I just do copy, select the tracks I've already drawn, turn on my snap. Do it and just copy them two snaps or five feet down the road. And now they're nicely parallel. We've got a nice set of wagon tracks that leads up to the bridge. And of course, we need the same on the other side. Turn off the snap for the first one so it doesn't become too regular. Draw your track. Do some variations on it. Um, I should probably say that I'm using the um, on modifier modify F9 to place the tracks on top of each other. That looks nice. And do the copy again. Snap on. Do it two snaps distance, finished. And there's my wagon tracks on the other side. 
Now I want to turn my attention a little bit to the indoors here. Say it's, a, it's just a little cottage perhaps with two rooms. So what I need is a wall separating the two. I already know from my previous uh, work that I uh, used half a foot for the width of the tool. So brick gray sounds like the one I had. Or well, actually I had a stone wall if I remember correctly. Do I have one here? Wall. Stone wall, there it is. With current width, that means I can set my width here while I'm drawing for half a foot. And my snap is still on, that is good. Draw a wall in here. And there I've got a wall separating my two rooms. Obviously we need a door that leads from one room to the to the other. Let's check that we've got the standard size. Yes, one. Here's my door. And then I'm just going to place some basic furniture in the... The farmer obviously needs, needs a bed. And um, on the other side he's going to have a kitchen, so he needs a stove. There we go. And a little table with some chairs so that I can turn off the snap. There we go. And a wardrobe or something like that on the uh, rock. Should have a rock here in the. It's got a fancy bedroom for a farmer. And just a sideboard. Oh, that's not quite adequate. A storage shelf sounds great. Yeah, in the other room. There we go. And then he might want to have some couple windows. Scroll down. Oh, what he needs, of course, is a fireplace. A fireplace would be adequate. I can just use this one here from the fall on. Zoom so it fits the wall here. There we go. There's my fireplace on the wall. But I was going to draw some windows. You've got some small windows here. Set to normal. Place one here in this room. One here. And this is probably enough with windows for a small cottage already. Here we go. And here's my nice little bridge house. The bridge keeper. Or looks after this structure so it's in good repair and maybe even collect some tolls but he's probably alone so he's not gonna press the matter on any well-armed dangerous looking adventurers coming his, his way oh it's looking pretty good uh, and before i'm doing a few final things like a a grid let's take another look whether we've got uh, another question Okay, Geoff has, says, says, I feel like the wagon tracks are a little strong, dark. Is there any way to fade them some more? Yeah, absolutely. It's always good to use uh, extract properties on a uh, object first um, before you're going to do stuff like that so you know uh, which sheet, sheet they are on and they are on the tax sheet. So I'm going to take a look. It's just glows on the on track. The transparency is from the, that they have is from the symbol fill they're using. But I can just add, a, say, a blend mode uh, into it or a transparency. In fact, this game comes down a similar thing. So I'm just going to do a 50% blend mode. And that's actually getting more dark. I think I need to move that up. So it goes first before the glows. And see, there's a lot less strong the tracks. Okay, and uh, then we um, probably want to use that either in a virtual tabletop software or in print. 
if we were using it in a virtual tabletop software, we would probably not want to add a grid because we're going to rely on the grid that's the, uh, the software like Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or whatever you're using applies to the map. So we don't double up the, the grids, but you want a grid if you print the map. So I'm going to uh, define the color first. My grid is supposed to be. I want a black grid on it. And then I'm just going to go do draw hex or square overlay. Square grid is fine, and uh, I say I want a five feet foot grid for the map. Your typical for your fantasy role playing game apply, and there's the grid on uh, my map already. This also faded out a bit. See if I check the grid sheet. There it is. It has a transparency effect from fifty percent, and you can lower or, high, or make that higher depending on how strong you want the the grid to be on the map. Actually, I'd prefer to be a little less strong, so I'm going to do a thirty percent of opacity on the map on the grid. That's a bit softer. And then uh, finally, to actually uh, print the map. Or not not be able to show your uh, proper paper print here, but I can uh, print it to a PDF. So I'm uh, going to say I'm going to print the map. And I want it to print it to PDF. I want to print it to scale. So it should be really a one grid square. So five foot uh, should actually be an inch on paper. So I'm going to say on paper, one inch should be exactly five feet in the map. And if I do a preview now, you're going to see, here's my preview. Can I get that into the video screen? Oh, something's odd here. There it is. Here you First, you can see in the output, there's no lines in the bridge anymore. And uh, but uh, the map is, is you're seeing just a section of uh, the map because the scale is too large. You know, the map at that scale won't fit one piece of paper. So I'm going to close that and bring up the here, and then you can uh, say, "Where's my print dialog?" Uh, looks, I've lost my print pr dialog now. Just a second, I'm going to find that back somewhere hidden under all my windows here should be a print dialog. No. Okay. That's a bit annoying. Did I kill that now with my... Okay. Problem is, I can't get back to the map. Okay, just a second. I will need to restart or load this map in a different instance of Campaign Cartographer. Uh, here we are. That's not the one that I wanted. How do I get back to my uh, drawing, to, uh, my print dialog? Problem here with all the windows open. Anyway, anyway I'm, uh, I will need to show you a different version, something I've uh, created previously. See a very similar map with a wooden bridge and a little bit of the bridge changes here. Uh, I wanted to create a broken bridge, and what I did, what I did here is uh, simply replace the bridge sections with a broken piece, but. Um, going to show you how you can do both in one map. 
So let's see and change the layer of these two sections of bridge. Now oh, that was the color. I wanted to change the layer of the two to a new layer, say bridge. Oop. Bridge broken. And hide that bit of bridge. See, that's gone. Extract the properties here. So I'm on the same uh, layers and sheet. And create a new layer. And bridge repaired. This is my current layer I'm drawing on now. I'm not going to choose the good section of the bridge, place that. And now I've got the repaired section. And I can simply switch between the two by hiding one layer and showing the other. I've got a nice, quickly adjustable map between two different states of the bridge. Okay, that's the uh, that uh, bit done. And let's take a look at the questions we got. Okay, that's my... That's the questions. Um, the shortcuts on the menus, okay, yes, the uh, like the on and uh, endpoint modifiers, if you go to tools and snaps, the shortcuts for the commands show right next to the entry in the menus. So see if you got the um, endpoint modifier, that's the F9 or the nearest point on, those are the two modifiers I use most often, so F5 and F9 are your friends on the keyboard for the shortcuts for these. And uh, see here's also shortcuts via control for cut, copy, paste. They are shown in the menus as well. Or for redraw, if you do a, need a quick redraw of the map, control R is what that does uh, for you. Okay. I've got a helpful, not a question, but a helpful hint for the uh, mouse over for to mouse over the CC3 icon, the taskbar. See, but it actually doesn't. It's just this, the two copies of CC3 there. Well, I'm going to look that in uh, when I have the quiet and nerves to do that, and not in a live stream trying to fix things while a horde of people is watching. It's always a bit nerve-wracking, so I'm not going to do that here. And uh, I've uh, shown you what uh, I wanted to show you with the map. I hope you like what's our result. The bridge in stone or the bridge in wood, however you pr uh, prefer it. And uh, Print it out, use it in your games, or export it as a JPEG or bitmap file. That's perhaps another option I, I should do if I, I want to export this as uh, an image for a virtual tabletop without the grid. I just go in and hide the grid sheet again, and then goes File, Save as a rectangular section JPEG or PNG file. Let's do PNG and set the options, the size I need, that will depend on the virtual tabletop you're using. You've got to look at that, how large your map should be in pixels. And then I'm just going to save it. Use the F, the endpoint modifier, F5, to attach my export window to the corners of the map border. And then it's going to export the whole thing. Here's our rendering process. And then go on my Photoshop is going to open with the finished map. There's my finished map. 
Hope you like it. Hope you enjoyed the map making for uh, tonight. The um, map, uh, the video will be on YouTube later on for those who want to rewatch it or you didn't manage to be here tonight. We're gonna post the link to that uh, underneath the video when that is ready. One more thing, yeah, if you've been using the uh, Mike Slay style here, and uh, we are going to, you're currently running a promotion with 20% off the Mike Schley symbol set. No, that's not only symbol set 4, like I used here, but also symbol set 5, the Cities of Schley. They're both 20% off with a voucher code. And I'm going to post the uh, voucher code below the video in a minute. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night or a good day for those who are still earlier. And um, see you next week in the next live mapping video by Pro Fantasy Software. Goodbye.